Hello, hello, hello. Can you guys hear me okay? We'll put a yes in the chat if you can hear me okay. Yes in the chat if y'all can hear me okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I don't see y'all in the chat yet. There we go. Tiffany says, hey, hey, Tiffany. There are you. Jewel says, yes, she can hear me okay. All right, awesome. Who else is on here? Put your name in the chat if you're on. And all of you guys from the U.S., if you're not, put where you're from in the chat. Hey, Jayla. Hey, Jewel. Hey, Tiffany. <laughs> I am excited, y'all. Hey, Demetria. Hey, Desiree. All right, awesome. Everybody on here from in the United States or y'all from, from different places? Hey, Tamara. All right. Awesome. 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 Hey, Zay Marie. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited, y'all. Hey, Sonia. All right. So we only have one hour um, for me to teach you guys today, tomorrow, and the next day. So I'm going to try to get in as much as I can because there is so much information that y'all have to learn um, if you're going to be doing this. All right. Hey, um, is it dying? Dying Demo of Beauty, <laughs> Annette. Hey, Annette. All right. And remember, if you guys are not registered, make sure you are registered um, at patientsdeanfinance.com for this event because only the people who are registered will get the coupon to get $100 off of the course if they do decide to take the course. The stuff that I'm going to teach you guys on here, you may not even need the course. You may be able to pull it off um, on your own just from what you guys are going to learn on here today how many of you are familiar with rental arbitrage or or airbnb at all put in the chat if you are familiar with it at all or if you are just a brand new beginner never heard of it is this brand new for you or have you guys heard of this before and i'm pretty sure you guys have heard of airbnb from the perspective maybe of staying in one <laughs> but as far as investing um in it how many of you guys are familiar with it and put that in the chat. Okay, awesome. All right. Um, I know I'm messing your name up. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Is it Jai Demo of Beauty? Sonia says, yep, she's heard of it. Okay. All right. Tiffany says yes, but she doesn't know the process. All right. So this is going to be interactive. So if you guys can get on a computer or be at least have a, a iPad or something that you can search on. Um, because once we get half, about halfway through here or in a couple more slides, um, you guys are going to have to be interacting. Okay. So it's going to be a little bit interactive and not just talking at you guys, but so you guys can actually learn um, what we're going to be teaching. Hey, Michael. All right. So let's go ahead and dive right in as we have more and more people coming on. Okay. For those of you who registered, you know, this is the Build Passive Income Fast live three day intensive training. Um, this training really was designed to just help you guys who have told me that you want passive income, but you're not sure, you know, where to start with it. Um, just to kind of give you guys a little bit of background about me, for those who are new on here may not um, necessarily know who I am. Um, of course, my name is Patience Dean. I am the founder of Arbitrage Queen and the Passive Income Academy, as you can see on the screen here. Um, I've done a lot of different types of businesses, literally have been an entrepreneur since elementary school. <laughs> um, and there is you know, a story um, to that, but literally have been um, started my first business in elementary school. By the time I got to middle school, I was a known business consultant. Um, and most of you on here already know the story, so I'm not going <laughs> to repeat it again because I have three days on here to teach you guys. Maybe I can talk about it tomorrow. Um, so basically, I've done almost every type of business you can think of because I've done business consulting. I've helped people start up everything from airlines to your mom and pop, you know, uh, clothing store to uh, cleaning businesses to um, cleaning cars, um, mobile detailing, every, every business you can possibly think of. I've helped someone start in some capacity, and I've also helped a lot of people start up ministries and churches. And for those of you who don't know, even though I have been in business all my life, 
Uh, my background um, is also in the supernatural. I've, I've walked, always walked very, very closely with the Lord. Um, and so it's kind of a, it's kind of both. I'm in ministry and business. And I think that's what actually got me to the point where I realized how important passive income is, y'all. Because I've done it all. I've worked in corporate America. And I do remember, and I think I told you guys this story before, of when I was working in corporate America. And yes, I was making six figures, but I remember there was one summer where my son came over for the summer. And even though I was making a lot of money, it was his summer vacation. And I worked every single weekend. So even though he was with me for the summer, I could barely even get time to spend with him while he was with me for the summer. And so that's when I began to kind of look at all of the different things and just really narrow it down. Like, okay, I can do any type of business I want to. I've done brick and mortar businesses before. I've done everything from owning ATM machines before um, to you know, the restaurant thing and all, all of every type of business you can think of. But that summer, I think that was what really, really woke me up because I realized, hey, yes, I was making a lot of money, but if I wanted to take time off to spend time with my son, Yes, I would have had to ask somebody permission, ask somebody's permission to get time off to go spend that time with my son. Even though I was making money, I didn't have the time. And then in addition to that, what if I wanted to leave town and go somewhere else? So that's when I realized the three things that were most important. Not just having money freedom, because you can make a lot of money and still not have the time to even spend it with the people that you care about but also location freedom. So time, money, and location freedom were the three main things that I began to realize, wait a minute, if I don't have these three things, I'm not really free. I literally have to go put in a request to get time off just to send, spend some time with my son, even though he's right here in the house with me. And this is the thing, guys, I was working from home. Okay, so for those of you who think, well, working from home is the answer, right? Because I got my time back. No, you don't. Even though I was working from home, I still had to be in front of that computer, closing a sale. So I still didn't have location freedom. We think we have location freedom just because we're working from home, but not necessarily. Okay? So it was really that summer that woke me up. And then in addition to doing ministry and realizing how much greater of an impact I can have in ministry if I have not just money coming in passively, but my time and my location freedom. If I'm in prayer in the morning and the Lord wakes me up at three in the morning and says, hey, patients, I want you to do a three-day conference in Costa Rica. I should not have to go ask somebody for permission to take time off to be able to go to Costa Rica and do that conference, okay? So this is one of the things that I realized is a hindrance even in our calling and our assignments in the body of Christ. If you are spending 40 hours a week and you at times that by how many hours you're spending a month on a job, if you took that time and began to use it for the kingdom of God, how much more impact could you have in the kingdom of God if you just had income coming in? And not only that, it was God's intention for us to have passive income. Because when he put Adam and Eve in the garden, he didn't, it was never a thing where they were supposed to work. The only time the idea of working came about was when they came under the curse. When he said, okay, you have to work by the sweat of your brow. The reason why there were four streams of water going through the garden of Eden is because there were supposed to be four streams of provision coming into that garden so that Adam and Eve would have everything that they needed while they were in there. Working was never a thing until the curse came along. And if the Bible says that the law of the spirit of life has made me free from the curse of sin and death, then I don't have to live under that curse anymore. So essentially, um, we should all, and it was God's intention for us all to have at least four streams of passive income coming in if you are a Christian, or even if you're not, when God created the first man and the first woman, there were four streams of provision coming into that garden. Um, so you need to have at least four streams of passive income so you can have your time, your location freedom, and then the money. Money is fine, but if you don't have time and location freedom, you're still bound. Okay, so that's why, that's how I came up with the Passive Income Academy. Once I noticed those things, I got rid of all my other businesses and I was like, hey, I'm only going to focus on businesses that will produce passive income for me. And so rental arbitrage was one of the ways 
that I realized, hey, I can be able to um, create passive income for myself and not really have to worry about, you know, being on somebody else's clock. Now, granted, I do have multiple streams of passive income and rental arbitrage is not the only one um, that I do, but um, it is a big part of the passive income that I've had coming in. All right. So these are, I'm just going to go quickly over some of the things that I'm going to be covering today. Um, and if you have any questions, you can hold on to your questions or put them in the chat because I will get, as we get closer to the end, um, I will open it up for Q&A. And then also if I'm talking about something and you're not understanding what I'm saying, um, or if you have more questions about it, you can put your questions in the chat as well. Um, but I am trying to get through as much of it as I can, guys, because we only have three days to teach you guys as much of this stuff as I can. All right. So in the next three days, we're going to try to cover finding the right property, understanding what rental arbitrage is, which I'm going to talk about next. Um, setting up your property as a corporate accommodation. It is different from just doing it as a regular rental. Um, and then providing um, exceptional guest experiences so that you can be a super host. Um, every property I've ever put on Airbnb and, and rented out short term, I've always been a super host. And my properties are always going on the first page of Airbnb because there are specific things that the um, algorithms look for to move your property to the first page. And I don't pay for any type of marketing or anything for Airbnb. It's just because there are specific things that I've noticed over the years. That if you have your pictures taken those ways, um, your property will get on the first page of Airbnb. So we're going to talk about some of those things. Um, we're going to talk about maximizing your profitability and scaling your business. Um, we'll try to cover all of that today, hopefully. I don't think I'm going to get through all of it today, but we do have three days. So if I'm talking too fast, let me know. <laughs> it's just because I'm trying to get like as much as I can done today, y'all, because it's so much information. Now, granted, I do actually have a course um, for this that you can enroll in um, to go into more detail. But I do still want to try to cover as much as I can. So for those of you who can't afford it, you can still be able to get something done to get you some passive income coming in while you're on this training. Because that is my goal is for y'all to actually be able to do something um, while you're on here and not just listening to me. <laughs> okay. So um, next thing we're going to talk about is rental arbitrage. What exactly is rental arbitrage in the first place? Um, rental arbitrage is very different from most of the other type of real estate investing we, we hear about, right? Typically, when you hear somebody talking about real estate investing, typically they're talking about, you know, either flipping houses, wholesaling, um, things like that, or maybe just being a landlord. Um, rental arbitrage is a little bit different. So with the rental arbitrage, you're not buying and owning the property. So that's the number one difference with the rental arbitrage concept. Okay, the typical landlord buys the property and then rents the property out on a monthly basis to a tenant. That is not what we're doing with rental arbitrage. Rental arbitrage, you're not owning the property, which means you don't have the liability of owning the property. And if you talk to wealthy, smart people, they will tell you, you don't necessarily want to own the liability of anything. You just want to control the asset to make you income. You don't want to necessarily own it because the owner of it has to deal with all of the liability that comes with it. But you can actually make more money from the, of the a property that you don't even own than the owner themselves. Okay, that's, that's why rental arbitrage is so powerful. So basically, in layman's terms, what it is, is you rent a property. And then let's say you're renting the property from the landlord. Let's say you're paying $1,000 a month and it's a condo. And you sign the lease. You have to make sure that your lease is done in a way that it allows you to sublease the property. And there's some other things, too, that have to be in your lease. And we teach that in the course um, as far as, you know, just the, the legal aspect of it, what needs to be in your lease agreement so that you're protected when you're doing Airbnb with the property. You sign a lease just like you typically would if you were getting the place to rent it yourself. 12-month lease, whatever they're requiring from the landlord. And then you take the same property that you're paying $1,000 a month for, or let's say you're paying $1,500 a month. I think that one's easier to remember. <laughs> let's say you're paying $1,500 a month on the property. It's a two-bedroom condo. Now, you take that same property that you're paying $1,500 a month for, and now when you put it on as a short-term rental or short-term accommodation, and you're putting it on Airbnb or 
uh, what's some of the other places like VRBO, um, Booking.com. There's way more than them than those now, but those are the three, the main three that we'll put them on. But now you're taking that same property and running it out nightly. Okay, so you can clearly see there's going to be some spread there between what you're paying monthly and what you're going to do and need to do um, and what you'll be getting back nightly. So say, for example, I'm paying $1,500 a month for this property, but I put the property on Airbnb for a 99 or let's say $100 a night. Now, $100 a night is $3,000 a month. Now, notice if I'm paying $1,500 a month, but I'm making $3,000 a month. Is that not double? So I'm paying the landlord, yes, it's $1,500. I keep the extra $1,500. Okay, so I'm basically making the same amount of money off the property as the landlord. And in, in some cases, which I'm get, getting ready to tell you, you're going to be making more than the landlord. Just by taking, because for example, if you do $1,500 a month, Let's say you divide that by 30 days. That's the equivalent of $50 a night. But if you're renting the property out for double that, at least double that, $100 a night, now you know you're doubling and making $3,000 a month instead of $15. Now, if you're doing it as a corporate accommodation, you can make triple that $1,500 a month. Okay? It's, it's, it goes up because now you go from renting the property out from a $400 a night to now $300 a night. And depending on what type of property you have, how unique your property is, you can go all the way up to running your property out for $1,500 a night. It just depends on the property. Okay. So guys, this is so powerful, y'all. Can you imagine you don't even own the property? You're just renting it. You're paying the landlord his $1,500 a month, but you're making three to five to $6,000 a month off of that same property that you don't even own. You don't have to pay the property taxes or that you don't have the liability of owning it, but you're still leveraging that asset to make even more than the one that probably even owns the property. So as a corporate accommodation, you're able to charge um, double and triple what you typically would just doing it as a regular rental on Airbnb, okay? So, Hopefully, you guys have a better understanding of the concept of what rental arbitrage is. You are just renting the property. You're leasing the property long term on a monthly basis. But then you are turning around and putting it back on the market as a short term rental and renting it out nightly to double, triple or quadruple what you would be paying for that rent. OK, so in the in the spread between that is what's called the arbitrage spread. That's why it's called rental arbitrage. For those of you who wonder, you know, what that word is. Arbitrage spread is just the difference between like, what you're putting in and what you're getting back. It's kind of like the profit, kind of. All right, so now for those of you who are in here and you like the idea of this rental arbitrage idea, um, put, some, put some, some thumbs up in the chats. Put some thumbs up in the chat if you like the rental arbitrage idea. You don't have to get a mortgage. You don't have to apply for no mortgage. You don't have to pay no mortgage. You don't have to pay any property taxes. You are just getting a regular lease. Regular lease. You don't have to worry about what a lot of real estate investors run into, the debt to income ratio, none of that, because you're not incurring any debt. Okay, this is another powerful thing about rental arbitrage is you're not incurring any debt. No debt, no 30-year mortgage where you're paying three times by the time you look at the amortization schedule. None of that. So you, you're not getting the liability. You're not getting the risk of owning the property. You're not incurring any debt, but you can still build passive income very, very quickly. Because think about it. How long does it take to rent a property? Doesn't take that long. You can have rental income, short-term rental income coming in within the next 30 days. It's just a matter of which we're going to talk about next, picking the right market, looking at what your market looks like where you live, and then deciding what strategy you want to go with. And we're going to get into some of the strategies and all of that next. So this is where it's going to get a little bit interactive. So for those of you who are on a computer, you have your phone or anything like that, I want you guys to search, search and see 
if you can find, go ahead and pull up Airbnb. Just go to airbnb.com if you can. And then I want you to put your city and state in Airbnb. And when you do it, I want you to just kind of look through there and see what the average property is renting out for a night. And this is interactive because I want y'all to put in the chat. Once you see what is the average property in your city and state going for a night, if you're in a different country, you can put it in there too. If this is international, this information is not limited to the United States. This is anywhere you are in the world that Airbnb is, okay? Which Airbnb is in a lot of places. I haven't really seen a lot of places that is not in, um, unless you're in some really, really remote place, you know, in which case would still be good to put on Airbnb because you wouldn't have any competition. Okay, so either way, you can do this from anywhere that you are in in the world. All right, so look, go ahead and pull up Airbnb.com where right where you are on your phone or whatever, and put your city and state in and search as if you were looking at for a rental. So I'm actually gonna do this with you guys. I'm gonna do Airbnb. Man, I had a lot of Hopefully, y'all can tell I'm trying to breathe with all this pollen. <laughs> trying to breathe. All right. So, are y'all pulling it up? I don't see any numbers going in the chat yet. So, I'm putting in Chesapeake, Virginia for me. Chesapeake, Virginia, because that's the area that I'm in. And you don't have to do exact dates, you can just pick any dates one adult and then just put search <coughs> search okay and I want you and when you search you sh it should look like this it should look like this where you're seeing little bubbles on the map showing what property so right here in Chesapeake Virginia where I am y'all can see there's a property there for $95 a night one there for $200 a night this is live right now. Just searched it. One for, um, put it back up. One for one hundred and sixty-six dollars a night. One for one twenty-two a night, all the way down to forty-two dollars a night. One for one hundred and ninety-five dollars a night. But the average that you're seeing here is around one hundred and fifty dollars a night. That's going to be the average. You're seeing some ninety-five, some one hundred ninety-five, some over two hundred. Um, but for the most part. If you're seeing, most people are charging over $100 a night. So when I say the minimum could be $100 a night, that's literally the minimum. That's not even setting the property up as a corporate accommodation. That's just if you were just read, written it out regular, so like regular folks. Okay. All right. So there's a race says the property she's seen in her area is between $34 to $162. Jewel same properties listed between $70 to $144. That's it. This is a night, guys. Um, Tamiya seeing properties that are between $65 to $231 a night. A night, y'all. Um, Desiree says her, her average is about $100 a night. All right. And then you're in London. So you're seeing between 80 pounds to 162 pounds um, in, great, in the greater London area. So you can see that there are real people in your city, in your town, making $100, $200 a night, running out their space, literally. Okay. Diane says she's seen the minimum property in her area is $81. And most of them are around between 150, um, maximum 300. So yours is averaging probably around 120 a night, Diane. Let me think about that. How much is $120 a night? And typically, I don't even, I don't time it by 30 nights. I usually times mine by like 24 nights, just to kind of give it a little bit of a margin of error there, just in case it doesn't book all the way out. But even if you were doing, let's say $120 a night, and you only rented it out for 20, let's say 20 four let's just times it by 24 nights because you want to leave some room there just in case it doesn't book out for all 30 days that's how much you're making a month if you were just renting the property for 120 a night for 24 nights this is what you're making a month and this is not including adding cleaning fees um business um fees and, and other things, there's other things that a lot of Airbnb hosts add in there to increase 
and to buffer their profit too, besides just besides this. So you're not subtracting cleaning from this, okay? This is straight profit because you're still adding, charging your guests for cleaning too. They're paying for their own cleaning and all of that, okay? So how many of y'all could use an extra? Now, if this is just regular though. Corporate accommodation, you can make double this, double to triple this a month. Okay, so how many of y'all could use an extra $3,000 a month? And then I really want y'all to think about it. How much would you say you would need to be able to replace your income? How much you would you need to be, have coming in every month to replace your income? So let me um, do, I want to do like a real live interactive here with you guys. Now, Typically, when you look at passive income and when you study passive income and when you look into creating passive income so that you can retire, a lot of times experts will tell you, well, if you want to retire with passive income, you need to have at least 80% of your current salary to retire with passive income. I don't believe that. Okay. I'm going to tell you why. I don't think that having 80% of what I used to make um, on my job is enough for my passive income. I go by the 120% strategy and I'm going to tell you why. Because let's say I was making um, $100,000 a year for my job, right? Let's just say y'all pull out your calculators. I told y'all this is going to be interactive. So let's say I'm making $100,000 a year for my job. That's about $8,333 a month. Okay, let's make it a little bit more average, okay? Let's say I'm making $60,000 a year for my job, and I divide that by 12, and my income is, let's say, $5,000 a month. So if I would need at least $5,000 a month to make $60,000 a year. So the reason why I say you want to have at least 120% what you used to make on your job and not just 80%, is because remember, whatever you're doing for passive income, if it's a business, businesses fluctuate, okay? Like incomes fluctuate. fluctuate. You could have certain months where it's low, where it's high. So if you're only, if your Airbnb is only producing 80% of what you used to make and then you have a slow month, now you could be sitting down at 30, 60%, 60% or 50% of what you're used to making. And that's dangerous, okay? You don't want to do that. That's why I say you should have at least 120% coming in from passive income before you retire or walk away from your job. So if you're making $60,000 a year, 120% of that, 120 would be you need to have at least $72,000 in passive income before you walk away from your job. If you are making $60,000 a year, so do $60,000, whatever you're making a year, times 120%. And then that's the amount that you will need to be able to comfortably retire. You want to be getting more than what you were used to getting on your job. So that way, if you kind of have a slow month here and there, and it fluctuates like business typically does, you're still good. Does that make sense? All right. That makes sense, guys? All right. So now I want y'all to actually do that. Whatever you're making a year, I want you to times it by 120%. Whatever you feel like you can comfortably retire with a year, I want you to times that by 120% and put that number in the chat. So if you're making 60000 a year, put 60000 times 120 percent that's the amount of income you need to have coming in to comfortably replace your income and walk away from your job with that passive income okay so desiree are you doing your math a little bit different <laughs> it looks like you're doing your math a little bit different because you got sixty-five thousand plus oh okay so you're adding the extra I see what you did. So you're adding like the extra hundred, extra, I, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> okay, somebody put in the chat. Just put the number. How much money do you would you need to walk away from your job? 
whatever you're comfortable with um, annually times that by 120% and put that number in the chat for me. And then I'll show you how to reverse engineer that to figure out how many Airbnb properties or short-term rental properties you will need to hit your goal. Okay, so right now, what I'm trying to do is help you guys realistically see what's going on in the market with Airbnb and realistically see what your personal goal should be and realistically see that it's doable. Okay, so Jayla says she needs 69000 Okay. Desiree, you're working two jobs, so you need 72000 Okay, that's good because at the end of the day, we want you to maintain the same lifestyle. Okay, I don't want you to retire with passive income and you eating Roman noodles every day. That's not. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, Diademo of Beauty says she she needs 84,000 pounds to retire. Tamia says she needs $60,000 to retire. All right. So now what we're going to do is once you have your number, put all your numbers in the chat of what you need to retire. And then I will show you how to reverse engineer that. So you know how many properties you need or how many Airbnbs you'll need to reach that goal. All right. So let's say you are at, like Tanika, she needs $72,000 to retire. So if your average property was making $1,500 to $2,000 a month, which you can make that easy. So then you would do 72,000, whatever your number is. Let's say you divide that, let's just divide it by 1,500 a month. Divide it by 1,500 because that's gonna be kind of, you're gonna make more than that. But obviously we want to under project so that we can ex, um, exceed the goals. Okay, so if I wanted to make $72,000 in passive income and have that coming in every year, then let's see how much is that a month? So 72,000 divided by 12. So you need to replace $6,000 a month in rental income. Okay, so $6,000 a month, divide that by 1,500 because your average profit may be 1,500 a month. You only need four rentals. You only need four rentals with passive income coming in to make $6,000 a month and to um, replace your $72,000 in annual income. Does that sound like a lot? Because remember, whatever your number is, you got to divide it by 12. So in that, if you need to make $100,000 a year to retire comfortably, then you're going to divide that by 12. So you need to make $8,333 a month to replace your $100,000 a year income. So to get to that $8,333 a month, you're going to divide that by $1,500 a month because your average profit is going to be between $1,500 to $4,000 a month. But we're just going to be calculating on the low end. Okay? So if you divide, you take your amount and divide it by 12 so you know how much you need a month. Okay? So in that... You need $8,333 a month because you need hundred k a year in passive income. So $8,333 $8, divided by $1,500, which is going to be your average profit from each property. You need, if it says five and a half properties, you need six properties. So you need six rentals, six short-term rental units. Now, with what you can charge as with corporate accommodations, you could probably do that clear that number with three properties with what I'm going to teach you guys um, in the course. Okay. So are you guys kind of getting an idea of realistically what you need? Okay. Sonia, you have a, you need to make 144,000 a year. So 144, 144,000 a year. Is what you need to retire. So you're going to need to divide that by 12. So you need at least $12,000 a month in passive income. So that $12,000 a month, you're going to divide that by 1500 which is going to be about the approximate profit from each property. So you'll need eight units. Sonia, you'll need eight units to retire and have $144,000 minimum 
a year coming in. Does that make sense? All right. All right, because I want you guys to have realistic financial goals. Realistic financial goals. This is not a, oh, you're going to get rich overnight if you just sit here for 30 minutes and listen to this video. Okay. The profit margin is huge um, with rental arbitrage. And all you have to do is do one property at a time. And there's so many strategies that I teach um, my students that you can start. Even if you don't have a lot of money, you can start. So, all right. So now that we understand the 120% rule <laughs> and we know what our goal, our personal goals are going to be. We've already looked at some of the properties in our area. So you guys have an idea of, you know, what your market is what your average rental is going for in your market now what i want you guys to do is go back to the airbnb search that you did put in your city and state again and this time instead of just looking at how much these properties are going for i want you to click on a couple of them and see if the average properties that people are renting are two bedrooms or three bedrooms in your area more than likely they're going to be two bedrooms Okay, so go back and search in Airbnb again. And make sure you guys are writing this stuff down, okay? Write this stuff down because you're going to have some realistic goals um, on what you can accomplish. So go back into Airbnb. And this time, when you put your city and state in, and I'm doing this with you guys, when you put your city and state in and you see those numbers, you know, kind of like I have here. Okay. Me. There we go. And you see those numbers, click on a couple of those, like just click on maybe one or two of those. Maybe click on the cheapest one and then click on the most expensive one. Like I just clicked on the one that's 122. And I can see there that it's a townhouse in Chesapeake. And that one is going for $122 a night. So when I click on it, on that property, I'll be able to see this one is a three bedroom. So now I have an idea, okay, a three bedroom in Chesapeake is going for $122 a night. Okay. And then I'm going to click on one of the ones that's $95. And this one is not even a whole apartment. This one, they're just renting out a guest suite. Basically written out like their master bedroom suite with a private entrance. And they're renting that out for $95 a night in Chesapeake. Okay. So I just want you guys to see, look in there and see what are, what is the average. Are people renting out two bedrooms? Are they renting out three bedrooms? Because you kind of should already know you want your number to be in the average you want your number to be in the average. If your average was $120 a night for your city, then you want to be renting yours at at least $120 a night. So what you're going to do is go in there in, in Airbnb and look at the properties that are renting for $120 a night or whatever your average was. Click on them and see if they're two bedrooms, if they're one bedrooms, or if they're three bedrooms. Okay, so click on a couple of them so you can kind of average it out. So whatever your average was for your city and state, go back into Airbnb, click on properties that are running for that price and see if they are two bedrooms, three bedrooms, one bedrooms, and put that in the chat. Desiree says there's a studio going for $109 a night. Must be a nice studio. When it also depends on what area that you're in. I mean, if you guys are in like California, yeah. You could have a studio going for $200 a night. It just depends on the city and state that you're in. Where are you at, Desiree? Or a studio going for $109 a night. I mean, this person was renting out a a guest suite, basically a master bedroom with a private entrance for $95 a night here in Chesapeake, Virginia. So, and keep in mind, guys, you guys will be able to charge more when you're renting your properties out as corporate accommodations, okay? That's gonna be a whole nother ball game. That's gonna be like adding, just putting gasoline on, on yeah, it's, it's gonna be 
more than these numbers that we're looking at. But I just want you guys to have some realistic goals and see what people are actually doing in your backyard, right, where you are. So you're in Portland, Oregon. Oh, wow. And they're, they're doing studios for a 109 tonight. Okay, so um, Di, I'm the lady who's in England, it looks like there's one bedroom. The average is one bedroom. Now, typically, just across the board, what I've come to find just from doing Airbnbs um, is that the average, and you're going to get the most bang for your buck at like the two-bedroom mark, at the two-bedroom mark. Because once you get over one bedroom and you are at two bedrooms, then you can have, you know, maybe multiple beds in your second second bedroom, and now you're able to host a family. And you're not just limited to, you know, maybe two people. So we have to keep that in mind. If you have two bedrooms or more, then you can host more people. And if you can host more people, you can even charge more per person. Okay? Some people do it per person. Some people just charge for, you know, per night. And some people do both. But average from what I found, two bedrooms tend to do the best. Two bedrooms tend to do the best because then you can start... Um, reaching families as well. And even if you're renting to corporate, to people who are, you know, business owners and things like that, they also travel with their family sometimes too. They don't necessarily only travel by themselves. Okay. So you guys should have an idea now. Have you guys looked in there and clicked on some of the properties that are charging what the average is to see if there are two and three bedrooms? I don't see the answers in the chat. In your market, the people who are renting it out for the average price, are they doing two bedrooms, one bedrooms, or three bedrooms? Only two people answered. They put that in there. Put that in the chat. Let me see it. All right. Awesome. You guys good? You can still hear me okay? All right. So now this is just a quick way that you guys can search to see what people are renting for in your market. Now, granted, there's going to be, you can do way more research than this. There's different platforms like AirDNA and things like that that you can go to to really do market research for your area. And all of that we go through in depth in, in the course. But, okay, Frances said she has her average, they're doing three bedrooms, and she says six beds for three. Oh, Wow. In six beds for $322 a night. Tanya says, okay, Jewel, you're in Atlanta. Okay, so are you guys averaging two bedrooms or are most people doing three bedrooms and more? Because this is going to tell you guys what type of properties you should be looking for. Okay, I recommend at least two bedrooms. Now, granted, if you have an extra property that you're trying to rent out, you can do, you know, you know, whatever, if, if it's a two-bedroom or more, you can do that. You can still rent it out. Okay. So in England, I'm seeing you got the two-bedroom between 95 pounds to 261 pounds. Okay, awesome. Jewel says she's seeing a lot of two-bedroom apartments. Yeah, that's probably going to see a lot of two-bedrooms. Two-bedrooms are kind of right where you want to be. Two-bedrooms or more so that you can be able to, you know, cater to the average family. Three bedrooms, okay. Dave says he's seen a lot of three bedroom retreats, okay. For 75. 75 a night for a three bedroom? That is cheap. Are you sure they're not just renting a room? Okay, and this is another thing too with rental arbitrage that we didn't get a chance to talk about. So let's talk about this while we're on this. I'm glad you put that in there, Dave. So you don't have to even rent out a whole property to put it on Airbnb. There are people who are renting out their trailers on Airbnb. There are people who are running out their boats on Airbnb. There are people who are running out their couch on Airbnb. If you have an extra room that you're not using and you don't mind people being in your home with you, <laughs> you can also um, rent out just that room on Airbnb. Okay, so you don't necessarily, um, like the other person we were looking at just now that was renting out for $90, $95 a night, they were just doing a guest suite for $95 a night. I know for me, from the time that I moved out, um, when I was 19, I never had to really pay rent on my own because if I had an extra room, I was renting it out. And typically, it was making more, just that one room could make me more than what my rent was. 
okay? Because back in the day, um, especially when I first, first got saved, I was always taking people in off the street, <laughs> okay? So always, always bringing people into, into my house. So I kind of got used to that. I kind of got used to that. So after a while, it was just like, hey, if I had an extra room, I was renting it out. Renting it out on Airbnb, and then that money was able to pay my rent. So I was able to live rent-free and then take that extra money and put it into my business or whatever else you know that I wanted to do. So that's another strategy that you can use if you are you know, maybe in a position where you're like, hey, I want to start saving up some money. This is a strategy that you can use. If you have an extra bedroom, go through this training because, I mean, we're not going to have time to probably to go into the decorating and all that today, but we're going to go into all of that. We'll get into it within these next three days. I still have two more days to go. Um, today, I just wanted you guys to get an idea of what the numbers look like, what realistically you, you would need to replace your income with that passive income. But remember, if you are just trying to save up some extra money too, so that you can be able to retire early, guys, you can do that. Like I said, if you don't mind someone being in your home um, and just staying a night or two, you can put your extra bedroom on Airbnb. Um, I know I had a couple of rooms that I had on Airbnb, and I think I was staying in a, I was staying in a three bedroom at one point. So I had, in the way that it was set up, I had my own side of the apartment. So I didn't even have to see me. They were on their own side. And there were two rooms on the other side. So I had each room on Airbnb for $65 a night each. So each room by itself was on Airbnb for $65 a night. So if you add that up, what is that? What's $65 a night times two because I rented out two rooms within in the same house. 65 times two. Okay, so that was $130 a night that I had coming in almost over $3,000 a month that I have coming in just renting out two extra rooms. Two extra rooms, which was more than what my rent was. So I was living for free. And this was a luxury apartment, okay? It wasn't like, this was like luxury, luxury. Luxury high-rise. Okay? So there's a lot of things that you can do. And you don't even have to, you have a lot of flexibility with it. Let's say if you only wanted to maybe rent out your extra bedroom, maybe for the winter time. Maybe your kid comes over for the summer and stays with you for the summer. You can just rent it out during the winter time. You you have the choice as to when you open up your calendar. It's very very flexible. <coughs> it's very very flexible as to how often you want to rent your property out, or how often you want to rent your room or your space out. So this is another strategy for those of you who are like, you know what, I don't have the money to rent out a whole other property right now to put on Airbnb, but I do have an extra room. I do have an extra couch. I do have a boat. I do have a trailer or something else that you can, there's a lot of things that you can rent. Did you know that you can even put a, you, you know how they have those camping tents? You can put a camping tent in your backyard and rent it on Airbnb and somebody will book it. They don't even have to be in the house. Did y'all know that? Some of the stuff I see people written out there, I'd be like, really? But hey, there's always somebody in out there that needs it. You can literally put a tent, a camping tent in your backyard, throw some nice blankets and pillows in there, and rent it on Airbnb. Okay, and if you guys take, a take some time to really look through Airbnb, you'll see some stuff like that on there. And it is easy money. Um, that you can have coming in um, and you can build it and build that passive income fast. All right. So let's go ahead to the next one because we only have, man, time is flying. It is flying, flying. Okay. Because it's already 7.51 and we only have one hour for training and it will be on again tomorrow at 7 and then the next day at 7 on the same, you know, on the same um, link. It'll be live like this. All right. And I mean, I'm still going live at 9 o'clock like I typically do for um, Supernatural Money Monday. So I am still going to be going live for that today, tonight, later on today. All right. So, and then let me see. Actually, since we only have nine minutes left, um, I'll just start from here tomorrow. Let me go back through and answer some of your questions so I can get your questions in since we only have nine minutes left. Let's pull back up through some of y'all's questions. 
Okay, so now and I wanted to open it up because I, I, I told you guys I would open it up so you guys can ask some questions. So basically, we just got the foundation today, you know, understanding what rental arbitrage is, understanding how profitable it can be, understanding how practical it is, and the fact that people are really doing it right in your backyard, and then also coming up with your realistic numbers um, as to what you would need to replace your income passively to retire. All right, so go ahead and put your questions in the chat because we have about nine minutes left. Um, and I wanted to give you guys a chance to ask some questions because I said that I would. All right, so does everybody have a thorough understanding of what the passive income is? Okay, so Sonia's question is, what do you do for bathrooms, water, et cetera, when you rent out <laughs> a tent? Um, great question, Sonia. Um, obviously, you're going to have to let them use the facilities in the house. Okay, like they're, they're going to be sleeping in the tent. Like their accommodations to sleep is going to be in the tent. Um, but they'll, you will still have to give them access to use a bathroom um, and access to use basically the common areas in the house. No matter what, what you're renting out, whether you're renting out a boat or you're just renting a tent in your backyard, you want to at least give them access to the main things that they will need, to the common areas like your kitchen and the bathroom. Yeah, so you would still have to give them access to those. But great question, though. They're not going to be going in the outhouse, okay? <laughs> Some people just like the, the like being in nature and like, you know, being able to sleeping in a tent. Some people do. And of course, the tent would probably be cheaper, too. So some people want that experience of, hey, I had a sleepover in a tent, but I paid less. But, you know, they were still able to get up and go to the shower in the bathroom. So you still have to give them access to, you know, the basic accommodations that they would get. So, but that's a good question, though. Okay. Okay, so Dave says, how to start going about renting a house or even an apartment? Um, the same way you would rent it if you wanted to stay in it. Now, this is one of the things that we do teach in my actual course. Um, I do have a course called um, Mastering Rental Arbitrage where we go into detail because this is actually one of the hardest parts. It's easy, you know, to put your your couch up for rent on Airbnb and make a couple extra dollars. It's easy, it's easy to do that. And not only that, but it's getting a little bit more competitive now because people are kind of getting a hang of it of how much they can do on Airbnb. Um, so one of the hardest things is going to be finding the properties because right now, a lot of landlords don't necessarily want you renting their property out on Airbnb. But there are people, landlords, who do. So you would just have to have, this is within the course, we give you the actual scripts and everything. And give you the actual scripts of like the emails to send to the landlords and you're branding yourself as a professional um, property management company so you're not just you know calling some landlord hey dude uh, i just want to rent your property and make money off your airbnb no you're branding yourself as a professional rental um short-term rental company um we're teaching you we're building your website and everything and, and doing all that in the course so then when you reach out to a landlord, they're coming back to your website. They're able to see all of the details and all the benefits of working with you. And why should I, as a landlord, trust you with my property to rent it on Airbnb or to rent it on, you know, as a short-term rental or, or corporate accommodation? Um, so those, there's specific scripts and things that you'll need because you're going to have to basically convince the landlord to rent their property to you, knowing that you're going to be renting it out. On Airbnb, and a lot of landlords, you know, are still hesitant because they're they're concerned. You know, what if somebody damages the property and things like that? But we'll cover that tomorrow because there are there's insurances and different things that cover that. And those are some of the things that we teach you guys in the course: where to go to get your insurance, how to reach out to the landlords, how to get a landlord to agree to give you their property, um, knowing that you're going to rent it out. You have to, you know, present yourself in a manner that's credible. You know, for that landlord to trust you with their property, um, knowing that you're going to be doing that. And then also making sure that you have the proper um, wording and legal um, jargon inside of your contract, your lease agreement with that landlord, too, to make sure it allows you 
to rent the space out um, as a corporate accommodation. So that's there's a lot of different little things that go into that part as far as renting the house or renting the apartment. What you don't want to do is just go apply for a couple of places, sign a lease, and don't tell them you're going to do Airbnb. And they find out you're doing Airbnb. Don't do that because now you'll be stuck with that lease and the, the, the owner could come and say, well, I don't want you doing Airbnb in my place. Now what? Now you're stuck paying for that place. So do not do that, okay? Trust me, been there, done that. Learned a lot of this stuff the hard way, bumped my head, did all of it. Been there, done that, been down that road too. Do not do that. So we do recommend um, that you go through the right way, letting the landlord know up front, you know, presenting yourself as a professional um, short-term rental company, letting them, you know, and going through the process that we teach you to to gain their trust so that they're, they're able to trust you with the company, I mean, with their house or with their property, um, and then also making sure you have the things in the contract that you need. Okay, so Sonia says, I'm not sure if we have enough time for this, but can you help me figure out what to charge for four, a four-bedroom, two-bath for 10 days during the U.S. Open U.S. Golf Tournament June 2024? So, Sonia, keep that question for tomorrow because then we can actually and make sure you're on your computer tomorrow so you can actually share your screen and I'll show you and I'll walk you through how to actually do your market research. And that would be live, so it'll be good training for people who are going to be watching. So save this question for tomorrow. And when we're on here tomorrow, make sure you're on your computer so I can walk you through it. We'll do it live with you and help you actually come up with your pricing and everything live. Right here. I like stuff to be interactive, guys, because somebody else can follow along and be able to do it. Okay. Yeah. So if hopefully you're here tomorrow night, Sonia, but save this question for tomorrow because it is already um 7:59. So we're gonna get ready to kind of wrap it up for tonight. Dave says, um, do you have to have money to rent out stuff? Um, great question, Dave. So the only money you will need to have is the money to acquire the property, right? Typically, if you're signing a lease, they're going to want first month's rent, security deposit, and then you can furnish the place. Now, we do teach ways around the furniture. So let's say the place is $1,500 a month. You could try to see if you could work out a deal, maybe so you can do, you know, not do the full fifteen hundred for the secure, for the first month's rent. You know, sometimes they'll have specials and things like that. But if you were doing the first month rent and security deposit, and the rent was fifteen hundred, so you would need you would need three thousand, obviously, right, to sign that lease. And then let's say you didn't have money to buy the furniture, you can rent the furniture, and we'll show you how to do that. You can rent the furniture, get the whole place furnished by the next day, get your property up on Airbnb, and then use your profit. And every month, replace one room of furniture. So you take your furniture, your profit for the first month, replace your dining room. Your profit from the second month, replace your bedroom. So you can start um, with no money and just enough money to just to get the, the place. You can start with just enough money to sign the lease if you want to and rent the rest of the furniture if you need to. It would just take a little bit longer for you to get to your profit because you will have to take your profit every month and replace the furniture. Um in no one room at a time until the whole place is furnished. So that is a strategy that you can use if you don't have money for the furniture, um, but you do still want to get started as soon as possible and you at least have enough money to sign the lease. Okay, so hopefully that answers your question there, Dave. Um, and then we'll get ready to wrap it up for tonight. Um, guys, I do have, I'm um, trying to see if I even, I don't even, tomorrow, well, yeah, we'll just have to get into some more of this stuff tomorrow. Um, but like I said, I do have a course called, um, a mastery rental arbitrage and it's, it was going to be on my website. I always point the wrong direction down here somewhere, <laughs> patiencesdeanfinance.com um, if you guys are interested in that. Um, but either way, we're going to be on here tomorrow from 7 PM to 8 PM again, um, getting in on Sonia's question and then helping you guys learn some more about this. So we have tomorrow night and the next night. So we have plenty of time. You guys will be able to. Today went kind of fast, though. So, so there's still a lot of content for we, us to learn. So, so I will be seeing you guys tomorrow. And then don't forget, tonight I do have the live, um, the live that I normally do, which is going to be um, 
the one where we you guys ask me questions about business finance and things like that so you could ask some of your questions <laughs> there too if you guys wanted to do that um so nine o'clock p.m i will be back on here tonight for um supernatural money monday um other than that you guys have a great night i will see you guys tomorrow hopefully you guys learned some things and you, you can go back and replay this that's why i made it live um online for those of you who you know maybe missed it um you can go back and watch it and then we'll be on here again 7 p.m eastern tomorrow night to keep it going for our three-day training see you guys at 9 p.m for my other live